In this Algebra 1 video, we're going to be talking about Chapter 6 Quiz Reflections. More specifically, we're going to be going over and going over each of the questions of the quiz we had beginning of the chapter on solving systems of linear equations. I will refer to it as, if I abbreviate, I'll write SOL, systems of linear equations. In general, the quiz covered all three methods, and these methods span sections 6-1 through 6-4. Now, those three methods were the graphing method, and that's the method that gets you close. It's the visual way. And if it's a pretty answer, you can find it using the graphing method as long as you're being precise. There's then two algebraic ways to solve systems of linear equations. You got your substitution method, and you got your elimination method. They both always work, and I've told students, and if you know they both always work, if you pick one, honestly, if you're not very good at one of them, if you pick one, it technically always works. It's just sometimes ugly to always use one method. So in this quiz, you'll notice that I'll purposely go back and forth with what method I'm choosing based off of what I feel would be easiest to use that on, and I will explain my reasoning of why I'm choosing that method. That way, if one of you prefers one method over the other, you can get, at least get to see the method you like in action. But, but it is, I do think it is worth giving the other, both the other algebraic method a fair shake. Now, before we get started, let's talk about that bonus question number 10. This is one that, at least fortunately, no one got it wrong, but it's something I want you guys to think about. It says, how do you check your answer and know that it's correct? And notice, no is in caps locks. That means I'm yelling at you. Know that it's correct. By the way, make sure you do this. Unfortunately, there were definitely some of our classmates that did not do this. You simply have to do the following. You got to plug in your alleged solution. It's not actually you confirmed your solution until you prove it. And remember, your solution is an x comma y. It's an ordered pair. You got an x coordinate, you got a y coordinate. You need to plug that in, but not just into one of them. You've got to plug it into both of the equations, not just one. You got to plug it into both. Now, when you're doing this, it's important to make sure it's true for both. Just plugging in doesn't mean anything, so it's got to be both. That's something that's very important. Now, if it's only true for one of them, I'm going to do a quick, ugly sketch. Let's say this was our graph. Let's say our lines did that. Um, if you were to plug it in and it's true for this line, that means the dot's on this line. But if you plug it in, it would not be true for this line, the one I just went over in red, because it's not on the line. So that's what it means, and that means it's not the solution, because the solution is where it's on both lines, and where it's on both lines is where they cross. So it's got to be true for both. Make sure you're doing that. All right, so we're going to start at the top. We're going to start with those graphing questions. Now, these you cannot get around. You are required to graph these, even though I'm aware you could have solved these using one of your other skills, one of your other methods, and that's perfectly fine, but that wouldn't have helped you get that point, that the one point that the graphing was worth. I meant for this to be a review of how to graph slope-intercept form, so that was very important for you to make sure you're taking that time to, get, to try it. Anyway, a crash course of those notes back from that video, you got to get y by itself. And in this first example, y already is by itself. But in the second example, y is not by itself. So the fastest way to graph these is to get y by itself. But now remember, that's only one way to graph lines. You're more than welcome to use one of the other methods we learned to graph lines. We learned how to graph lines by finding the x or y intercept. We learned how to graph lines with the with input-output table, but that was usually easier to do when y was by itself. So, and then we learned slope-intercept form. So I recommend the slope-intercept form method. It tends to be the go-to method for graphing lines. So let's use this first one as our example, and then for the second, we'll talk about how to get y by itself. All right, so let's take a look at the first equation of number one. It's y equals something times x and then nothing. Because there's nothing, that's normally where b is. Normally b is out there. So because b's not there, that means it must have been zero. So it must have been plus zero. So the y-intercept is zero for that first line. So when you go to graph that one, you should have a dot at the y-intercept of zero. I just added a blue dot over there. Now, so our y-intercept was 0 for the first equation, and then, actually I'll move that, I'll put that underneath. And then the slope, the slope comes next. The slope is the item in front of x, and the item in front of x in this example is 3 over 2. So the slope is 3 over 2. It's positive, so that means it goes up 3 over 2. And if you look at our notes, you got to graph the slope from the y-intercept, meaning from this location, you need to go, it happens to be the origin, you have to go up 3 over 2. So 1, 2, 3, over 2. So right there. That's where your second dot should be. Now you're ready to draw the line that goes through that. So draw your line that goes through those two points. You now graph that first equation. Now let's graph the second one right below it. For the second one right below it, the y-intercept is that 5 right there off by itself. It's plus 5, so that means it's positive 5. So put a dot of positive 5. 
and the slope is the thing in front of x. Well, the thing in front of x is just a negative sign, but we need a coefficient. Remember, if you need a coefficient, it's a 1, but in this case, it happens to be negative 1. Technically, it's negative 1 over 1. Since it's negative, that means it goes down 1 over 1, since the bottom is a 1. So from that location, you go down 1 over 1. I'm going to do a few of those dots just to make a point. So I went down 1 over 1 a few times just to let you see it. Now draw the line that goes through those. Now you've got both your lines on your grass. graph. Excuse me. Now it says name how many solutions it has. None, one, or infinite. These lines cross only once, so that's one solution. Now, the trick part of the quiz, not the trick in a good, trick in a good way, was if you graphed these wrong, but you still had them only crossing once, you could have still gotten this second point correct. But if you had graphed them wrong altogether, then you, if you didn't know if they crossed or you thought they crossed everywhere, you would have gotten the wrong answer. So now let's do number two. So when they give you the equations, and it's not in slope intercept form, in fact, this happens to be standard form. Standard form is ax plus by equals c meaning x and y are on the left side, and c is the constant number all by itself, and a and b are the coefficients. So this is in standard form. Well, let's get y by itself, meaning yeah, let's move x out of there. You move positive x by subtracting x from both sides. If you do that, this is a common mistake right here where students made. It's not 2y. It's negative 2y. That minus sign in front makes it negative. So it's negative 2y equals... Let's get how to putting x first. It's minus x. That means x is negative. So it's going to be negative x. That 2 is negative, so it means it's minus 2. So now you only have one step remaining to get y by itself. To finish getting y by itself, we have to divide both sides by negative 2. So on the left side, we're left with just y. On the right side... Technically, there's a negative, negative 1 in front of that x, and a negative divided by negative is a positive, so that means our slope actually becomes positive 1 over 2. So we have positive 1 over 2x, and then for the end of it, negative 2 divided by negative 2, that's a negative divided by a negative, that equals positive 1. So now you got y by itself. You now have it in slope intercept form, you're ready to graph. I'm going to hit pause and go through those same steps. Now, for precision, feel free to graph your slope. You're going up, up 1 over 2 more than once. And feel free to go in the opposite direction. It helps give you more precision for drawing your line. I need some space. So I'm going to white out over some of these words where I need to show my work for the next one. Okay, so now we're going to do the second equation. We've got to get y by itself. And I'm going to go through the exact same steps. Move x. y is negative, so I have a negative sign in front of it. And, it's, and so is x. And that 3 is positive, so it has a plus sign. Now move that negative 2 and you're done. That turns, into, that turns into positive 1 over 2 being our slope for the same reason as last time. And then 3 over negative 2, that's a positive i by negative. Well, that's a negative. And 3 over 2, that's also known as 1 and a half. So our slope is negative 1 and a half. That's our slope. Sure, that's awkward, but it does exist. Negative 1 and a half is between negative 1 and negative 2. So it's going to be right there in the middle. Oh, I just tried to draw it. It, just, it didn't work. There we go right there in the middle. So it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be close, that's all. So now we're gonna graph the slope from that. But notice, if you go up one, you're still in the middle like that, and over two, you're right here. So that dot does exist, it's just right there. Now you can go up one over two again, but you're still stuck in between like that. So that's how you can graph this. And technically, there's still a way to graph it if you wanted to get out of the negatives. You technically could go, instead of going up one over two, you could do an equivalent version of that, meaning you could go up one and a half over, um, I'd, over three, excuse me. Yeah, up <laughs> one and a half over three, because that's equivalent. One and a half is half a three, one is half a two. So if you want to go up one and a half over three, you would at least be able to get out of the negative, I'm sorry, get out of the fractions. It might make it easier on you. But if that doesn't make sense to you, ignore everything I just said and just do the, the original way. All right, let's draw that line. Okay, so now we graphed it, and now it's time to say how many solutions does it have? Well, these lines never cross. And in fact, these lines are parallel, and you know they're parallel, even if you just look at their equations, they have the same slope. And remember, parallel lines have the same slope. So these lines will never cross. So there are no, there are none, there are no solutions to this question. All right, so that's the graphing method. If you graph these and they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, that means they both start here. They both go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. That means those lines would be on top of each other. If they were on top of each other, that means it's infinite solutions. I believe that happened. That may happen on the retake version. I don't remember. So this is your graphing method. Head back to that video if you need more help in understanding this concept.
All right, moving on to numbers three and four. This is for the part of the quiz where I start saying you can use any method you want. Although I'll admit, biasly, I put them in the or almost in the order to where these beginning ones would have been a little bit easier using the substitution method. And here's how you know it would have been easier to use the substitution method. You want to use the substitution method any anytime one of your letters is already by itself, or if it was really easy to get by itself. So I'm just making up this question right now. Um, the one I just wrote, it would be really easy to get y by itself because you would just subtract 3x from both sides and then you would have y all by itself. So questions where a letter already is by itself, doesn't have to be y, it could be any letter, or one of them would be easy to get by itself, those questions you want to use the substitution method. Okay, so substitution method. You basically have y, y is x plus 4. X plus 4 is Y. That's what that's saying. So what you do is you take what one of your letters is, the expression, and you put it inside of that letter of the other equation. That's the key. That's the key. You, so if you don't have a letter by itself, step one is usually choose what letter you want to get by itself. Step two is plug that expression you get for that letter into the other equation. That's the mistake sometimes we make. We put it into the same equation, and then you get nothing. So I'm just going to write that first equation. 3x minus 2, but instead of y, I'm going to leave a blank, equals negative 7. So I just wrote that first equation. In that blank, we put the x plus 4, because that's what y was. So now your job is, if you notice, you only have one letter. You have an x and an x. So you'll end up having like terms. You, only, you can solve for x now. You only have one unknown. So now just go through your algebra. Let's solve for this thing. Okay, get rid of these parentheses. So we're going to use the distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. Negative 2 times positive x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. Negative times positive is negative. Now, there's, I just dropped down that 3x. We're not using it right now. Okay, so now your job is to combine like terms. This is how all equations work. You get rid of the parentheses as soon as you can. You combine like terms as soon as you can. Well, we're at that step, that like term step. We have like terms. We have 3x and negative 2x, or minus 2x, if that's what you want to call it. Well, 3x minus 2x, that's 1x. So now just drop everything else down. Okay, at this step, you'll have a two-step equation remaining. Now, in this case, we only have a one-step because if we go to get rid of that one, it's not going to do anything. I'm going to do it anyway just to make a point, but we're basically done with finding x. Anyway, so finish here. And we end up with x equals 1. That's what we end up with this one. So you got x all by itself, and now you know what x is. Now, your job, your life is easy. you got to take that value you just got for x and put it back into one of your equations. Obviously, you're going to choose the easier equation. You're going to put it in right there. So you plug in 1. Well, 1 plus 4 is 5. So that means y is 5. It was that simple to get the other letter. Sometimes it was a complicated equation. You plug it in, have to follow the order of operations, do all that stuff. But in this case, you're good to go. y is 5. So your final answer to that question is 1, 5. That's the final answer. For those of you who want to get in the habit of being more neat and organized with that second step, this is how it would actually look. You would plug it in, you'd see what you get for y. And if y wasn't already by itself, you would get y by itself and solve for y. All right, so 1, 5. Now we're going to do number 4. Okay, number 4, you already have a letter by itself. You got y by itself. So life is good in that case at that first step of getting one of your letters by itself. So we're going to take negative 3x plus 10, and we're going to put it in y's spot right there. You can go ahead and get your shell ready and just get and then plug in the negative 3x plus 10. Now, exact same steps. Distributive property and solve for x. Hey, I left out an x. I left out the one in the beginning. Anyway, so distribute and get combine like terms and get x by itself. Negative 2 times negative 3x, well, that's a positive 6x, so plus because it's positive. Negative 2 times positive 10, well, that's negative 20, so it's minus. Now your job is to combine like terms. When you go to combine these like terms, negative 6x plus 6x, well, you get 0. In other words, it's gone. So you're left with negative 20 equals negative 20. Well, uh-oh, our letters just all canceled out. Oh, wait, we know something about this. This is one of those special situations when you're using either method, elimination or substitution. When all of your letters cancel out, in this case, all of our letters are gone, and you're left with a true statement, negative 20 does equal negative 20, true statement, that means the answer is, infinite solutions. That means you have an infinite number of solutions. 
So, when your letters cancel out, you have to have a true statement, infinite solutions. Now, as a side thought, if your letters cancel out, you have to have a false statement. Let's say we had negative 20 equals 10, and you're up to the false statement. Well, that's a false statement. And the answer is no solution, meaning if you were to actually graph these two lines for that made-up example I just said, they'd be parallel, meaning no solution. They never cross. But in our example, we have infinite solutions. So that means if you graph one line and then you graph the other line, they would be right on top of each other. You'd have two lines directly on top of each other, so they're crossing everywhere. So it's an infinite number of solutions. Another way to feel safe about that, if you still don't trust yourself, you could plug in a bunch of points. Um, that, Like, for example, plug in x equals 4. If you plug in x equals 4, x equals 4, you'll get the same number for y. Plug in, I don't know, x equals 9. Plug in 9 right here. Plug in 9 right here. You'll still get the same number for, not, for y for both of them. There's even another way to know that you did this correctly. Put them both in a slope-intercept form. Put them both in the slope-intercept form, and you'll notice they'll have the exact same slope-intercept form. So I'm not going to explain that, but I am, gonna sh I am just going to write what that would be. So if you got y by itself on that top one, and you know you already have y by itself on the bottom one, you would end up with the same equation. You would have y equals negative 3x plus 10 for both of them. So it's the same equation. So of course it's on top of itself. They cross everywhere. Moving on. All right, so now we're at the first word problem, the only word problem I hit you with on this quiz. I told you this quiz is primarily focused. Primary focus was the arithmetic, was the how, because our next quiz after this was all about the word problems, and don't worry, that video is coming. All right, so we've got two situations. We've got Jose and we've got Marty. They're competing against each other, and they want to have the same, they got to be in the same weight category in order to compete against each other. So basically, one of them's got to gain weight, and the other one's got to lose weight, and they're going to meet each other in between. So a quick sketch of their graphs, so one of them's losing weight, the other one's gaining weight. Um, and the idea is, when will, they, when will they meet? When will their weights be the same? Because when their weights are the same, they're allowed to wrestle against each other. That's basically what we're doing. So each boy is going to be a different equation. So here's what they told us. They told us, Jose. Let's consider y. Let's help make this more clear. Y is going to stand for the total weight. That child's total weight. Oh, for all we know, we aren't children. Excuse me. That, was, that child's total weight. I said child again. All right, and x is going to stand for how many weeks? X, Because that's what the question says, how many weeks. So how many weeks? That's unknown. So we're going to say x equals the number of weeks. Because we're going to solve for x. We're going to solve. In this case, we're going to be solving for x. What number of weeks will they be equal to each other? Well, we've got to write three equations first. All right, so Jose's equation. Jose is y equals, well, he weighs 180 pounds, and he's going to gain 2 pounds per week. So the intuitive way of writing this is he starts at 180, and he's going to gain. That means adding 2 pounds every week. So that's two, to 2 pounds times the number of weeks. So that's Jose's equation. But just for the sake of what we're used to seeing, I'm going to transfer that into slope-intercept form. So I'm just going to change the order of that right side into 2x plus 180. You know, you know it's going to be plus 180 because it's positive 180 over here, so it's going to be plus. And it's positive 2x over here because it was plus 2x over there. So it means the same thing. Basically, it's saying 1 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 1. Basically what we're saying. All right, so that's Jose's equation. So I'm actually going to erase the original one. We're going to use this new version where it's in slope intercept form. Just out of habit, let's put it in slope intercept form. So let's move Jose over to the side. Okay. I don't know what just happened. Let's fix that. Okay, well, it seems Jose is going to stay in the middle. All right, so now let's do Marty's equation. Now, Marty's going to be the same situation. Marty is starting at 249 pounds, except Marty's losing weight. So he's going to be minus. He's going to be one pound per week. One pound per week. So it's one pound times the number of weeks. So this is Marty's equation. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer his into slope intercept form as well. So now, to read the question, it says, in how many weeks will they weigh the same? We're solving for x. So let's make it our goal. Whatever we do, let's worry about solving for x. You could solve for both, x and y, and get an ordered pair. But in this case, we can just solve for x. If you wanted to check your answer, I would solve for both and make sure it's true and plug it in and all that stuff. Well, we already have a letter by itself. We already have a letter by itself, and we're going to use a substitution method. Well, hey, the letter's already by itself in that one, too. So it doesn't matter which one you use. So basically, I'm going to take... 2x plus 180, and I'm going to put it in y's spot of the other equation. So yeah, I'm going to use the substitution method for this question. So we write everything. 2x plus 180 is in y's spot, and now we have just the rest of that second equation. Negative 1x plus 249. Well, all you got to do is solve this equation. And this is now equation. We learn how to solve equations with the letter on both sides. You start by moving your letters all to one side. You should move your smaller letter towards the bigger one. The smaller one is negative 1x. The opposite of negative 1x is positive, or plus 1x. 
Well, look what we got. We got ourselves a two-step equation. Now I know you, you can solve this two-step equation, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit pause and show these steps so we can get our answer. We know with x equals 23, so that, and remember, x was the number of weeks. So that means in 23 weeks, they will have the equal weight and be able to wrestle against each other. That's the answer to this question. Now, again, to check yourself, you could plug that in to find y, and then take your answer for x and y, plug them into both equations, make sure it's true for both, and you would find out it would be the case for this question. Moving on to number six and number seven. Now, to be biased, I'll be honest, I set these up to where you didn't really want to use substitution. You could have for the first one, it would have been very hard, but for the second one, it may have been a little annoying. So I went ahead and for number for these questions, I'm going to use the elimination method because, hey, look, your variables are already lined up because that was step one of the elimination method. Make sure your variables are lined up. Step two was make sure you had opposite coefficients or same coefficients on one of your letters. Well, in this case, we could cancel out either letter if you look at our first equation. We could cancel out the x's if we decided to subtract because x minus x is zero. We could cancel out the y's if we, if we decide to add because positive y plus negative y, well, that equals zero. So you get to choose which one you want to cancel out in this case. You could do either or. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, yay. So I'm going to do it with subtraction since that tends to be the one that students struggle the most with. So I'm going to show you subtraction. Whenever you do subtraction, I want to see a parentheses around everything because you've got to remember to, ca to basically carry that subtraction sign. All right, well, x minus x, well, those are gone. Oh, excuse me there. X minus X, those are going to disappear. Basically, it's going to equal zero. So you're going to be left with Y minus negative Y. Well, when you minus a negative, you add. So that's really 1Y plus 1Y. So that's going to give us 2Y. And then 4 minus 7, well, that's negative 3. All right, so you just got to finish beginning Y by itself by dividing by 2. So you end up with Y equals, now, negative 3 over 2. That's also known as negative 1.5. Or, for those of you out there who prefer decimals, negative 1.5. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Okay, we got y. Our job is to plug in now to either equation, does not matter which one, to get x. When you plug it in, you can leave it as one, negative 1 1.5. I'm going to leave it as negative 3 over 2 because that might make it a little bit easier. Or maybe I won't. Let's take a look. Let's strategize. If we go to the first equation we plug it in, we'll have x plus negative 1.5 equals 4. Which basically means, when you add a negative, that really means subtract. It's really saying x minus 1.5. Well, x minus 1.5 equals 4, so let's add 1.5 back to both sides. So plus 1.5. So in fact, we'll leave it as a mixed number because this will be an easy calculation. 4 plus 1.5, well, that's 5.5. So we find out x is 5.5. Now, if you have any doubt that these are your correct answers, plug them in to make sure they're true. Plug them into the first equation, you would have... 5.5 plus negative 1.5 equals 4. Well, I forgot the equal sign. Equals 4. Well, that means 5.5 minus 1.5. Well, that does equals 4. So that's a true statement. So it works out for the second one. Do it for this. I'm sorry. It works out for the first one. Do the same thing for the second one. Plug into the second one. When you minus a negative, it means add. Well, that means 5.5 plus 1.5. Well, yes, that does equal 7. So it checks out for both. So it's true for both. So it definitely is your answer. 5. Uh, that's not 5.5. 5.5 comma negative 1.5. Many students lost points, or lost at least half a point, for having the wrong sign. They were missing the negative 1.5, or they were, had 5.5 being negative, or maybe they had them switch. There were a lot of very small mistakes when I was grading these questions as far as how far off students were from the correct answer and losing partial points. So be careful of that and keep, and keep track of your negatives and be neat and organized, and don't forget all those old skills because you're still using them. All right, let's move on to number seven. Now, for number seven, those letters are very nicely lined up again, so I'm going to use the elimination method. And in this case, the only thing that eliminates right away are the, are the x's. And so they're opposite signs, so we're going to add, because negative 2x plus 2x, that equals zero. That's the other reason. You don't have to memorize opposite sign, different sign. Just logic your way out of it. All right, well, the x's cancel because they equal zero. So you have 1y plus 3y. Well, that's 4y. 5 plus 3 is 8. Now it's a one-step equation, divide by 4, and you got your answer for y. Now that you got y, plug it back in to get x. And when you plug it back in, you can plug it into either equation. It doesn't matter. I went ahead and just used the first equation. You notice I'm always in the habit of using parentheses when plugging back, parentheses when plugging back in. That is a great habit to be in, but in this case it wasn't mandatory, but I'm not going to apologize. I'm, I do it out of habit because it avoids you to stay unorganized, especially if you had negatives, or you had parentheses, or you had exponents, you had some kind of order of operations to keep track of. Anyway, solve for x, two-step two equation. 
All right, now you got X, so slap it together and get your answer. Now, off screen, I went ahead and plugged this back in to make sure it was true for both, and it was. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to keep showing you that. All right, so that's our answer for number seven. Um, on this question, same thing as last time. There were students that made mistakes with having negatives and they shouldn't have had negatives. They were being rather a little a little messy. Some of them were being too messy, but they were making mistakes and losing track of. I'll be honest. In this case, it was mostly negatives they were, they were losing track of. So I like to write negatives big and proud. That's not a squeeze the negative. That thing is big and proud. That is definitely not a little tiny negative. I write it big so I can see it. And this one, I did not squeeze it so close to the equal sign and like this and have to squeeze that negative right there to where when I go to write my answer, I may actually have missed it and never written that negative. You don't do that. That's, that's setting yourself up for failure. So be neat and organized and spread it out. Big deal. It might take up more space. Now for number eight, it's not obvious which one would cancel and... But the substitution wouldn't really be your friend either because if you were to try to get, let's say, y by itself, you'd have to move x over here, so you have negative 4x, but you'd have to divide by 6. That wouldn't be a pretty fraction. In fact, it'd be quite annoying to use. Same thing as if you'd move the y over here, then you had to divide by the 4 to get the x by itself. Still, you're going to have an ugly fraction to deal with. Same thing goes for the second equation. 3 doesn't go into 8. 8 doesn't go into 3 very easily. So if you added the 3y over here and then you divided both sides by 8, I'm going on a quick, fast tangent. Hopefully, I didn't confuse you too much. My point is if you're trying to use the substitution method to get one of these letters by itself, you're going to get ugly, annoying fractions. And yes, it does work and it, and it still could work. And if you're confident in your fractions and you only like the substitution method, go for it. I told many of my students that when I was in school, that was a method I almost always used, even if it was ugly, because it was simply. A more it was a way that I was I was I trusted it worked for me, but in this case that would not be a smart choice to make. We're going to use the elimination method. So this is a good opportunity to do this question because we haven't mentioned how to do the elimination method in this video. And in fact, I hadn't made a video about it before now. How to eliminate things where not, you got to change both of your equations. So notice, um, oh I'm sorry. In this case, we could change one of them. If you double this top equation, multiply everything by two, this becomes an eight x. This comes a 12y. This comes a negative 20. Well, notice, you can now get your x's to cancel, basically. So you could have doubled the top one. Or you could have doubled the bottom one. You could have doubled the bottom one. This would become 16x. It would become negative 6y. This would become 50. Well, now your y's can cancel. So as long as you can get one of your coefficients to be the same or opposite, you're ready to go. It doesn't matter which one you change here. It's up to you. It's preference. And sometimes you have to change both, but in this question, you can get away with just changing one. I'm going to change the top one, like I said. But I'm going to do it, but I'm also going to point out, when I saw students solving this question, I wasn't watching, but I mean, when I went back to check, many of them chose the elimina elimination method for the same reason. But what I noticed was, many of them, they got the first two down. They got the 8x plus 12y. That was great. But the most common mistake students make is they forget to do it to this constant number over here by itself. It's almost like distributive property three times. That's kind of what it's like. So you got to do it to that one too. You got to have negative 20 there. That was the most common mistake that students make when using the elimination method. Now I'm just going to write the second equation. All right, we're ready to go. We're going to cancel out our x's. They're the same signs. So we're going to subtract. So coincidentally, I'm going to do the hard version again. It's, by hard, I mean sometimes it's a little bit trickier to subtract than it is to add. But I want to show you it always works as well. All right, so let's do this. 8x minus 8x, well, that's 0. So that's gone. Um, 12y minus negative 3y. When you minus negative, you add. So that's really 12y plus 3y. Well, that's 15y. Negative 20 minus 25. Here was another common mistake students made. Many students put 5 as their answer to this. They thought of it as negative 20 plus 25. But, guys, this minus sign, you got it. It's almost like distributing it. It's got to go to everything. So negative 20 minus 25 goes deeper into the negatives. So if you go deeper into the negatives, you're going to be at negative 45. And so that right there was a mistake I saw a lot trip up a lot of students. And like I mentioned, like I said, on this quiz, it was a lot of small mistakes that tripped some of us up. We had the main ideas, but we sometimes got caught up in the details and we, and we messed ourselves up. Anyway, let's finish by, by our solving our one-step equation. All right, we know y equals negative 3. Well, now that we got y, let's plug it in to get x. It doesn't matter what equation you plug it in. Uh, just for random funsies, I'm going to plug into the second equation. I'm going to plug in negative 3 in for y. So I wrote the second equation, but I put parentheses where y goes. So now you're just going to use the order of operations and get x by itself. Solve for x. You're almost home free. Hopefully you didn't write negative 9 right here. It's positive. Negative times a negative. 
you got your x, you got your y, you're going to plug them into both the equations, make sure they're true for both equations, and then you'll know for sure that your answer is 2 comma negative 3. And that's our answer to number 8. Look what we have here, our final question on the first quiz. By the way, as a note, I am going to do the retake quiz in the same video of this video, but I'm not going to quite over-explain everything quite as much. I'm mostly just going to work through them. Now, in this question, you're going to have to do what I said. You're going to have to transform both equations because 2 doesn't turn into 5, 5 doesn't turn into 2, 3 doesn't turn into 4, 4 doesn't turn into 3. So you're going to have to multiply both of your equations. Well, you got to decide who do you want to cancel out. Um, we can cancel out the x's, we can cancel out the y's. I keep canceling out by subtraction, so I'm going to set this up to what I purposely will cancel out by adding. So I'm going to cancel out the y's. You don't necessarily know why. Um, well, 3 and 4 are both going to 12. Uh, we can make 3 into 12 by multiplying it by 4. So very often, it's going to be multiplying by the other coefficient. And we can get negative 4 into 12 and multiply it by 3. So now I'm going to distribute, but I'm going to distribute to all three numbers. Do not write 14. you got to distribute to all three numbers. Okay, we're now ready to go and solve this problem. Now, our, we can cancel out our y's. They have opposite signs, but really think of it as positive 12y blank negative 12y would equal 0. And the answer is adding because 12 plus negative 12 equals 0. So we're going to add these together. So 8x plus 15x, well, that's 23x. The y is technically equals 0, so poof, they're gone, because when you add 0, it doesn't do anything. And now 4 plus 42 is 46. Solve from here. We'll find out x equals 2. So once you got x, plug it into either equation to get y. You could plug it into the original equations. You could plug it into your new equations. It honestly doesn't matter, but to help you catch mistakes, I would plug it into the originals. Um, plug it into the original, and then take that answer, plug it into both of the originals, and make sure it's true. That way you don't bias yourself. What if you made a mistake making the new ones, and then, yeah, sure, it's true for the new ones, but what if you made the new ones incorrectly? So it's safer to put it into the originals. Do that order of operations thing and solve for y. Got ourselves a two-step equation. You got this. All right, so we got our answer. Y is negative 1, so put it all together. 2 common negative 1. That is the ordered pair where these two lines would cross. All right, so we've now finished going over the first quiz. It took 32 minutes. I just hit 32 minutes. And it was time well spent because I was explaining each question. Now, I am going to do the retake in the same video. So, yes, the video is going to look longer. However, I'm going to not over explain them as much. So, I can promise you it will not take 32 minutes to do the second video, to do the second quiz. Now, I've got a good idea. How about in order for you to help yourself? learn and maybe you didn't do the retake you should these questions you should maybe try them on your own and then hit play and check yourself that would give you some quick immediate feedback of how you're doing to really know if you're ready for this quiz so for each of the questions i'm going to remind you hit pause try them on your own first and that way because many of you even have uh, not everyone took this version and some of you even did just don't have it in front of you see if you can do it now and then hit play and check yourself because you just watched an entire video explaining these this video is going to feel like deja vu it's just different versions First equation. First equation, y intercept of 0, slope of 1 over 3. Second equation, y intercept of 2, slope of negative 1 over 1. Those lines cross exactly once. So one point was graphing them, the other point was saying it is one solution. They cross once. Do the same thing with number two, but number two, you got to get y by itself in that first equation. Get y by itself first. Good news is it's pretty easy. You just got to subtract x from both sides, and look, y will be by itself. If you subtract x from both sides, you, you will have. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I forgot about the two in front of the y. Anyway, you would have 2y equals negative x plus 4. Now divide both sides by 2, and then y by itself. So your first equation, for the reasons I explained in the first part of this video, is y equals negative half x plus 4. Alright, the, the slope of the first equation is negative 1 over 2, which means it goes down 1 over 2. And the y-intercept of that one is positive 4. Slope of the second equation is also negative 1 over 2. Oh, hey, same slope. So that means they're either parallel or they're lying on top of each other, and it depends on the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercepts are different, so that means they're going to be parallel. So we already know there's going to be no solution. It's going to be, it's going to be none. they going to be parallel lines that will never cross. I made a mistake. Did anyone catch it? I hope I don't scare you. I forgot to divide everything by 2 up there. 
So 4 divided by 2 is 2. I realized it when I realized that 4 was going to be off the graph. I was like, hey, I don't remember doing that. Let me fix that. There we go. Now we're ready to go. So on these, same slope, same y-intercept. I thought I did the opposite on this quiz. I couldn't remember. I thought I did. All right, anyway, so same y-intercept, same slope, meaning they both cross at this location. And they both go down 1 over 2. Both go down 1 over 2. So they both do that. So these lines are on top of each other. So if you were to graph this, your line, one line would be there, one line would be there, one, they'd be on top of each other. So I'm going to graph those neater, but this means infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. Check your work. Don't make that same common mistake that I was rushing and just made. I wonder if that's something you did during your quiz. Sorry for any confusion or anxiety I may have caused when I uh, when you started saying, oh, wait, because maybe you did it correct and you saw I was doing different. You're like, oh, wait, I'm crazy. What am I doing? Or hopefully you had confidence you realize this guy's crazy. Who is this guy? All right, we fixed our mistake. Moving forward, that's graphing. All right, round number three, number four. You already have a letter by itself, so I'm going with the substitution method. Y is 3 minus X. So I'm going to put 3 minus X in Y spot of the other equation. Open in parentheses, skip some space, and throw down a 21. In here, we're going to write 3 minus X. Now you're ready to go. Distribute your property, combine like terms, <clears throat> and then you will be ready to solve for X. Distributing, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 3 times negative X, negative times negative is a positive, so plus 3X. Now just drop everything else down. You just dropped everything else down, so now look for like terms. This is 2x, this is plus 3x. Those are like terms. 2x plus 3x is 5x. A common mistake, I guess I didn't point it out earlier in the first part of this video, is students, when they combine like terms, very often they do the opposite. I'll see students writing minus 3x, minus 3x. But guys, you only do the opposite when moving it to the other side of the equal sign. When they're on the same side of the equal sign, you just do what it says. Do not do the opposite. Two-step equation. You got it from here. You end up with x equals 6. Plug that in back into any of the equations, and you'll get y. I'm going to plug it into the second equation. Less work. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So y equals negative 3. And now off the screen, I already plugged in both of those to make sure it was true, and it was. So it's true for both. So our solution is 6 comma negative 3. Hopefully you got that same answer. Great job. I may have forgotten to hit, say hit pause. Make sure you pause before we do the next question so you can try it on your own. It might be a special situation. You could go substitution or elimination with this, but for the sake of x already being easy to get by itself, I'm going to go ahead and get that 5y out of there, and I'm going to go and get x by itself so that I can plug it into the other equation. Oops, I was supposed to say, you hit pause, you try. <laughs> Use any method you want, hit pause, give it a shot. So if you take the first equation and get x by itself, x is 4 minus 5y. That is x. So we're going to take that. We're going to plug that in for x in the other equation. It's got to be the other one. If you plug it in the one you started with, you'll just go around in circles and keep getting true statements and get nowhere. Don't do that. Okay, plug it into the second equation since we got used it on the first equation to get x by itself. Now distribute. Combine like terms. You'll have a two-step equation. I'm distributing underneath because I did not have room. 12 minus 15y. Drop everything else down. All right, now combine like terms. We got negative 15y plus 15y. Those are like terms. Oh, but wait. Those equal zero, meaning they cancel, meaning you have 12 minus zero or 12 plus zero. It doesn't matter what you call it. Really, you just got 12. So we have 12 equals negative one. Ooh, our letters canceled out, and we're left with a false statement. Hmm, go back in time. If your letters cancel out, you to the false statement. That means you have no solution. These lines will never, ever cross. No solution. That's the answer number four. Dig it. Look who it is. Marty and Jose are back. These guys just really want to wrestle each other. So here's what I did on the retake. I actually used the exact same question, but here's what I did. I changed it to when were their, what will their weight be when they are the same. Last time I asked how many weeks would it take. Now I'm asking what would their weight be. So go back in time to the question we did before. Before we were solving for how many weeks, and we got 23 weeks. So the same explanation as last time. Solve for one of your letters. In this case, it's, it's going to be easier to solve for x first. Well, now you're going to use that x information, and you're going to plug in the 23, plug in the 23, and see what y equals, and you're going to get the same answer. 
you're going to get 226. Now I'm going to go show my work for that. But we're going to take that x equals 23 for the same reason we said in this part of the video. And that's what we're going to use for the next one, the one we're on right now. So plug in the 23 and see what you got. So to check your answer, you would plug it into both, make sure it gives you the same answer for both. So remember, use the same steps we talked about before to get x equals 23. And now you're just going to evaluate both of these to get y and make sure it's the same answer. We're basically kind of checking our answer at the same time. And now, if you do this, the, the top one equals 226, and the bottom one also equals 226, and they better equal the same thing. That's how you know you have the solution. So that means 226 pounds, that is how heavy they will be when they're the same weight. All the explanations for the equations, how to solve for x, is the same from the beginning of the video. So if you skip that part, go back and think about it. All right, so now I'm not going to do number 10 on the, re on the retake because it was the same question, but I'm going to do 6 through 9. And on 6 through 9, um, again, I was kind of biased. I kind of made each of them look more appealing to the elimination method than the uh, substitution method, but not always. Like, for example, in number 6, you could have added 3y to both sides, and you then would have had x by itself. You knew had to have negative 3 plus 3y. You would have plugged that in for x, and you could use substitution. But for some of them, I'm just going to use elimination note to make sure I should give both methods a fair chance. So you can learn both methods. Or I lied. I'm going to end up solving this one with substitution. Hit pause. Try it yourself. So get x by itself. I decided, since I'm going to give both methods, I'll use elimination for some of the others. So get x by itself, and you're going to take that and plug that in for x of the other equation. That's what we're about to do. All right, I'm plugged in, ready to go. Distribute. Combine like terms. You'll have a two-step equation. Negative 6 plus... 6y. Now drop everything down. Look for like terms. We got plus 6y, we got positive 6y, and plus 5y. Well, hey, those are like terms. I'm going to drop down that negative 6. So 6y plus 5y, well, that's 11y. So we'll, And it's positive, so it'll be plus 11y. Now drop everything else down. You got yourself a two-step equation. Solve this thing, and you're done. I'm out of space, so I'm just going to cheat and write y equals 4. Because when you divide by 11, 44 divided by 11 is 4. I'm cheating and skipping that step. Um, writing divided by 11. Anyway, now take 4, y equals 4, and plug it into both, I'm sorry, plug into one of your equations and make sure you're getting the same answer for both. I'm choosing the second equation. It looks like it's easier. So put y equals 4 and y spot. Now, order of operations to multiply those and then solve for x. x minus 12 equals negative 3. Add 12 to both sides and you're done. That's not a 12. Ooh! X ends up equaling 9. Here's the part where I hit pause and think off screen for a moment to make sure this was the right answer and plug it in and make sure it's true. It checks out. It's true for both. So that means our answer is 9 comma 4. Most definitely. All right, that's number 6. Hey, you. Yes, you. Take a moment to try this one. Hit pause. See, I remember that time. All right, so for this one, x is actually really easy to get it by itself on the first equation, so I might use the substitution method, but I think for the sake of doing what I said, I am going to use the elimination method. So I'm going to double that top equation, because if I do that, that's become a 2x. That's become a negative 2y, and that's going to become an 8. But so now, you can cancel your x's, you can cancel your y's, you get the idea. So I'm going to do that more neatly. Do not forget to multiply by 4 to get the 8. Do not write 4. All right, we're ready to go. So based on whatever letter you want to cancel out first, it's up to you. Most people really like adding the cancel out because it tends to be a little bit easier. You don't have to deal with negatives. But to show that it's possible, I'm just going to do the subtraction version since we have a choice in this one. Hey, no, we don't. Only x's do cancel out. Not y's. All right, so just subtracting. I was originally looking at that these were the same, and so we didn't actually have to multiply the first equation. We could have just added these from the get-go, and the y's would have canceled. I made it harder than it had to be. Eh, we'll still get the same answer. Please forgive me, for I've made it harder than it needed to be. 2x minus 2x is 0. Negative 2y minus y is negative 3y. Right there, most common mistakes students would have made on this question. You know, it occurs to me that by me doing it the harder way, this is not going to be the way that many of you even tried it, so it might not help you find your mistakes. So I'm going to hit pause, solve it this way, then I'm going to hit pause, and I'm going to show you, then I'm going to hit pause again, erase all of it, and then solve it the regular way you should have done. I know, that's weird. Y equals negative 4. So we get 
0 comma negative 4. Now, let's say you didn't get this answer. Now you need to figure out where you went wrong. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit pause and I will, I will do it with just adding them to begin with and show you we'll get the same answer. So even though I made it harder than it had to be, as long as you follow the steps, you're okay. At the very beginning, we should just add these because y's would have canceled right away. 1x plus 2x is 3x. Y's cancel because negative, plus po negative 1 plus positive 1 is 0. 4 plus negative 4 is 0. You'll divide both sides by 3. 0 divided by 3 is still 0. Nothing divided by something is still nothing because something goes into nothing, nothing times. All right, so x is 0. Plug 0 back into either equation. It does not matter. I'm going to use the first one because it's easier. So we end up with negative y equals 4. Divide both sides by negative 1. And we get y equals negative 4. So we get the same answer. That was really sloppy. I might rewrite that. But we get the exact same answer as the other version. Maybe you found your mistake. So technically there's a negative 1 in front of that y. That's why you can think of it that way. All right, number 7. Hit pause. Try to rate yourself. Use any method you want, although... <clears throat> You could use substitution because it is kind of easy to get y by itself or x by itself, so you could use substitution from this one. However, I'm going to use elimination. Hit pause. Give it a shot. All right, so I'm going to cancel out, uh, I don't know, the y's. I'll cancel out the y's. So I, 2 and 3 both go into 6. So if I multiply this one by 3 and I multiply the second one by 2, I'll be able to turn the coefficients of those y's into 6's. Now distribute three times for each one. Do not make that common mistake in forgetting one of them. I'm going to hit pause and write it neatly. All right, make sure you share both of them correctly. Now, to cancel out those y's, they're the same thing. 6y minus 6y will give us 0. So this is a minus problem. Remember, once you get in the habit of using parentheses around it all when you're minusing, because you've got to distribute that minus sign. You've got to make sure you're minusing everything. All right, let's do it. 15x minus 6x, well, that's 9x. 6y minus 6y, well, that's gone, equals 0. Negative 9 minus 18. The answer is not 9 to this. The answer is go deeper into the negatives. The answer is negative 27. That right there would have been a common mistake for most students. And I think visually it's because this negative sign is way over here, and the 18 is way over there. We forget it's there, but you've got to be careful with that. Um, as a side note, as a side tangent, you technically can avoid this mistake if you literally do distribute that negative. Make this a negative 6x. Make this a negative 6y. Make this a negative 18. And now you can add to solve. Now you could have done your same elimination but done it by adding. 15x plus negative 6x is still 9x. 6y plus negative 6y is still 0. Negative 9 plus negative 18, still going deeper into the negatives, is still going to be negative 27. It means the same thing. So if that helps you, do the way I just said with the green. It's up to you. It's preference. Anyway, one step equation, finish. All right, and so you get x equals negative 3. Now take that negative 3, plug it into either equation. It does not matter which one. It doesn't matter. All right, plug in negative 3. Follow order of operations, and then solve this equation. By the way, I plugged into the first equation. All right, two-step equation. You got it from here. All right, you get negative 3 comma 6. Hey, guys, one more question, and we're only at 15 minutes. I told you I'd do the second one in less than 32 minutes. Fantastic. All right, hit pause. Try this one as a hint. You might want to use the elimination method. Give it a shot. Just because I'm weird, I decided to cancel out the x's. So now I'm going to multiply the top one by 5 and the bottom one by 2. When in doubt, oh, if you don't ever know what one way to who to multiply who by what, honestly, if you just multiply the first equation by the coefficient of the other x and multiply the second equation by the coefficient of the other x, that's basically all you got to do most of the time. It always works. It might not be the easiest way, but it'll always work. All right, I just showed you both of them. Now we're ready to subtract to cancel out those x's really should give myself more room. That is a minus sign over there. Minus sign over there. I hope you see it. 10x minus 10x is 0. 15y minus negative 8y. Well, that's minusing a negative, so that's adding. So that's 23y. 5 minus 28. That's negative 23. Divide both sides by 23 to get negative. So y is negative 1. Plug that back into either equation. Remember, I suggest you use the original versions. Solve that, and you're done. Two-step equation. You can finish that. All right, turns out that x is 2. 
All right, so ladies and gentlemen, the answer number nine is two common negative one. And look at that, in 16 minutes and 20 seconds. So that right there, well, you don't know that, but I see it as my timer. That's how long it took me to go through the second quiz. Now, admittedly, you know I over-explained the first one to make sure I cleared up any misunderstandings. And then for the second one, I just made an effort to show my work with giving some tips along the way. All right, guys, so make sure you have quality quiz corrections or even just make sure you're studying quality. Hopefully, you got a lot of good practice out of this video of getting to try it and hit play and check yourself immediately. Because remember, guys, the key to success is practice with feedback. The sooner you give yourself that clear, concise feedback, the better off you are. Hang in there, and we'll be ready for next week for you to take things up to the next notch. Take care.